Welcome to Weekly Strange News. In this show, we'll take a look into the news and headlines to pick out curious reports of the strange, the weird, and the mysterious. Anything from UFO news to science advancements, the paranormal, and stuff labeled fringe science and fringe phenomena. Each news item we go over in this show, I will place all the links to them in the description box below once this live show is over, as well as chapters on the timeline index. Hello and welcome to all of my first time viewers and listeners and everyone watching this live. If you like the content that you see right here on this channel, hit that like button right down below if you're watching this live or in replay, doesn't matter, hit that like button as we do three live shows right here on this channel. So also subscribe and hit the notification bell as well. And we cover all topics from UFOs, the paranormal and things that are unexplained. Also on this channel, I do post YouTube shorts, keeping you up to date on the latest strange news. For instance, I posted a 60 second clip of a 2023 UFO news recap. It wasn't double speed because so much happened in 2023. But if you want to watch it more, the more in-depth version, you can find it right here on this channel. It's about 90 minutes long, going into detail on UFOs in 2023. There's a lot to cover today. I'm going to share my screen here. I know my internet is not amazing today. Okay, I, I know. It's going to be a little bit of a glitch there. I, I can see it as we speak. But I'm going to share my screen here and talk about, first of all, an update on the UAPDA. So I had mentioned, I think it was last week, maybe the week before, that the UAPDA was denied. Yes and no. A little fun fact about it is that it was passed, but a lot of it was scrubbed, if that makes sense. Let's go into detail on this. So under the provision, the executive branch has up to 25 years within a records creation to make it public, referring to the UAPDA. And even then, the president can determine that any records must remain classified for national security. So in that original amendment, they said, well, we want to create a very special group for people to look at the UFO records and see what can be made public and what could be classified as a national security issue. And this was created by uh, Chuck Schumer and Mike Rounds, um, which was originally called the Schumer Rounds Amendment, and then it changed to the UAPDA. So in so like exactly what is the for those that haven't been keeping up to date, and the bill directs the National Archives to collect government documents about UFOs, which the government now officially refers to as you know it UAP. And it's just like, as you can tell, I'm just, I'm just so done. It's like, I don't even care what you call it as long as we just get the information UFO UAP, whatever it doesn't doesn't really matter. But the bipartisan legislation was sponsored by Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer, as we are seeing right here, who had hoped to establish a process that could ultimately reveal to the public that the government knows about the existence of any non-human intelligences on Earth. And the legislation was co-sponsored by three Republicans and two Democratic senators. Under the bill, that was passed. The National Archives will also gather information about technologies of unknown origin and non-human intelligence. At least that's what the bill states. But the thing is, we need to ask, what was left out? Yes, it passed after originally it got denied between you and me. And then saying, OK, well, we, we get something. First of all, Tim Burchette here is not too happy. And Phil's would say, how do you say his last name? It is in my world and for closed captions. But what was left out? So Schumer and other lawmakers and both parties had originally sought much stronger provisions than what was ultimately included in the amendment. For instance, an earlier version of Schumer's amendment would have created a presidential commission to review government UFO records and declassify them to the public. But at the House level, Representative Tim Burchette sought to do away with the review altogether and instead he added a proposal would have simply ordered the department of defense the dod to declassify records quote relating to publicly known sightings of ufos as long as they do not reveal the sources methods or otherwise compromise the national security of the united states which when we're looking at the government that's really not a terrible thing i it, it, it's toughy here. Is disclosure going to come from the government at the end of the day? No. In my opinion, it will come from the people. The government, they're just playing a hand in all of this. But for Tim Burchett to say, at the very least, just provide the public sightings, but not really talk about or reveal the sources, methods, or anything that would 
that would compromise his national security, then it's fine. And you know what? I can dig that. But despite some of the setbacks, Schumer still hailed the legislation as, quote, a major win for government transparency on UAPs. What we've noticed from the beginning of this year up until present day, the term UAP. We're back. So at the beginning, it was phenomena, and now it's phenomenon, and it's just take it or leave it. You can, you can either say UAP as plural, or you can say UAPs. No one's really in agreement here. But Schumer also mentions it gives us a strong foundation for more action in the future. And I like that optimism. I think that is fantastic. However, Burchette railed to the New York Times against what he viewed as attempts by the intelligence community to kill his proposal and tamp down on efforts to compel public disclosure. So it's really nice to see two heads to a coin, to see two perspectives here, because both of these are powerful representatives in the House. And one sees it as a positive move, you know, step forward, while the other is saying, it could have been a lot better. And Burchett has been a, I don't want to use the word like hero here, but I think just someone that has received a lot of positive response at the very least. We want more people like you compared to other representatives that are actually fighting for our personal and public interest, right? So that's fantastic there. But he says, Brashad says, we got ripped off and we got completely hosed. They striped out every part. But here's a weird thing, because according to the Times, they also cited, dun, 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 an anonymous person which could literally be someone on the street, someone at the grocery store, someone in the government, right? It could be anyone. But the Times also cited an anonymous person with knowledge of discussions over the bill who claimed Defense Department officials had pushed back forcefully on moves towards transparency, which that's a given. Come on. That person did not need to remain anonymous to state a given fact, okay? They're, they're, <laughs> who's saying otherwise? Anyone could say that. And they would be right because we're seeing it as we speak. And the UAPDA is a fantastic example of that because we've known about it since July. And it's been having a lot of back and forth. And then it got denied. And then half of it got passed. I would say probably less than half. But there's a lot of pushback. So much so that even Lou Elizondo posted on Twitter, don't worry, there's a part uh, plan B, plan C, and so forth. So it, it's not surprising this anonymous person did not need to remain anonymous to state a fact. <laughs> but this next, this next article... I simply would not be a good show presenter or a good host if I did not make this the second article in the list of weekly strange news. Mm -hmm. And this particular video or er, article comes with a video. I got so ahead of myself because I'm so excited for this next article. You have no idea. If you've been watching this show for any length of time, I mention three things. Okay. That's cats, ramen, puck wedgies and portals okay i love all those things this one this one feeds it feeds into a few and i'm going to, like, like i said i'm going to share a video here while i read it to you i'm just going to put it on repeat fantastic you're going to love this i swear especially especially if you're a cat person <clears throat> so good all right here it is is it playing okay yes so NASA has achieved a significant milestone in space communication by successfully transmitting the first streaming video via laser beam from beyond the moon, a distance of 31 million kilometers or about 19 million miles away. The video, which is an ultra high definition, features a cat named Taters 
chasing a laser dot for 15 seconds. And this demonstration is part of NASA's efforts to improve communication systems for human colonization of the solar system, recognizing the need for faster data transmission, data transmission, as exemplified by the slow data return from the New Horizons mission to Pluto. Let me state this. People at NASA, okay, they have morals, they have ethics, and they have a sense of humor here. And I'm only saying that for this particular video. I'm not saying that as a general statement because people are going to disagree with that. And I love a good debate, okay? Arguments are different. Debates are great. And I want to hear your comments. But this video, I'm like out of the trillions, and I'm, and I'm not even using that word lightly, the trillions of videos that are online, they picked this one. This cat video chasing a laser. Nothing. I swear to you, nothing compares to this. If you are listening to this on a podcast platform, the YouTube link is in the description box. I highly recommend that you click it and you watch this 15 second video because it will make your day. If you, at the very least, just like cats, not even love them, just decently like them. <laughs> And this article goes into more detail. That link will be in the description box below referring to the article and you can go ahead and read it on your own time. But now we need to get back to UFOs, okay? I don't want to get too carried away with this one, but if you know, you know how much I love cats. So this next one, this is just a visual aid actually for this next image. So I'm going to share this. Do, 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 do. Here it is. Fantastic. Because a new poll by News Nation and Decision Desk HQ reveals 63% of Americans say they believe the government has more information about extraterrestrials than it is letting on. Between you and me, okay? Just, just keep this on the DL. Between you and I and nobody else. I thought that stat was going to be a lot higher. I really did. So here are how the results... Um, Released on Tuesday, breakdown. 17% say they don't believe the government is withholding information regarding extraterrestrials. 64% of Republicans say they believe the government has more information about aliens. 62% of Democrats say they believe the government has more information about extraterrestrials. 65% of independents, they believe the government has more information of on ET. 53% of those surveyed say they believe it has it is somewhat or very likely UFOs are related to intelligent alien life and the number of respondents the data the the excuse me the date the poll was conducted and the margin of error were not provided which is a big downfall because let's say for a second right you have 10 people in your survey those, those stats are going to be skewing all over the place, right? But let's say you have a few thousand people that you're surveying, your, your percentage is going to be just a little bit more accurate to the general population, right? So it's unfortunate that we don't know how many people were asked this question, but let's ask you this question, shall we? I think we definitely should. Yes or no? Do you think the government is holding on to more information about UFOs and about ET than they lead on? Let me know in the comments. Let me know in the live chat. Hit that like button if you say yes. Because I'd like to know that. Because I'm, I'm pretty shocked that 17% say they don't believe the government is withholding information regarding ET. We don't know the population. We don't know how many people were asked this question, but I feel like that's a pretty high percentage. Wouldn't you agree? Everyone in the comments is saying, yes, I think the government is holding more information about ETs than they are letting on. And if you say no, you might be watching the wrong channel. <laughs> You can bet your boots. That was the highlight of the year for me, okay? It was the NASA media briefing and Bill Nelson saying two or three times, we're transparent and you can bet your boots. Man, to this day, I'm still using that phrase. It's so good. I want it on a t-shirt. Okay. That was, that's like one of the highlights of my year so far. It's just that little phrase right there. 
too good. All right, getting into our next one. We are speeding through these faster than I expected, but there ain't no big thing but a chicken wang over here. Have you ever seen the movie Final Destination? I've watched it once, and it scarred me for life. To be fair, I think I was about 10 or 11 years old, and I I, I really felt that that movie on a spiritual level. Well, with this particular article, this is Final Destination, but like of the good kind. Because last Sunday, a young couple from Turin, Italy, experienced a miraculous escape when both of their light aircraft crashed during landing, but they both survived. Let's go into detail on this because this is like honestly incredibly shocking. So, Stefano Pirilli, 30, and his girlfriend, Antoinetta, 22, had rented two Technam P-92 Echo safe, no, super light aircraft, definitely not safe, to fly to Astri for lunch and then to go to the coast. Now, despite the perfect weather, as they say, for flying, both planes crashed upon returning to Turin in the evening due to unexpected fog. Let me say this. I've never heard of that plane before in my life. To be fair, I don't know much about airplanes. But if I were to ever buy one, I would definitely not purchase that one because the stats are way too high. We're in the same day situation. Both planes crash. One, okay. Two, uh uh-uh. We ain't playing anymore. So Stefano's plane crashed into a meadow during landing, but he was unharmed. His girlfriend's plane, on her first flight ever, by the way, great memory to have for the rest of your life, crashed from a higher altitude, resulting in minor injuries to her and the pilot. And both were taken to the hospital, referring to the girlfriend and the pilot. And the couple had decided to land at a nearby airfield due to the sudden fog, but both encountered difficulties and Stefano managed to escape the wreckage and assist his pilot, while Antoinetta and her pilot crashed at a different location. Upon learning of the second crash, Stefano, the boyfriend, rushed to the hospital to be with his girlfriend and the injured pilot. But Out of all of this, the worst part of this story is that it was this poor girl's first time being in the air. You can probably bet your boots that she is not going to be flying anytime soon. Because, first of all, plane crashes are very rare. They're they're not a common thing, okay? Obviously, that's that's why I use the word rare. But for it to be your first time and then you get into an accident like that, forget it. You have a new fear, okay? It's not just flying cockroaches anymore, but now it's being in an airplane. And here's an actual image of the crashed flight. So if you're ever going to buy an airplane, don't get the Technam P-92 Echo Super Light Aircraft, okay? Out of all of the options out there, steer clear of that one. Goth says, lucky them. It really is. And it's the total opposite of Final Destination to where you should have gone, you know, down under, pushing up daisies. But instead, you you survive almost unscathed. For her and for her pilot, they had minor injuries, but nothing too major or life-threatening. But now they got to keep a real eye out because what if they're really going to have Final Destination this time to where you're going to have knives flying out of your kitchen and hitting the other side of the cupboards, okay? Or you're driving and a pipe goes right through you. That is my, okay, that is a big fear of mine is, and I think for anyone, when you're driving behind an 18-wheeler and they have those pipes or pieces of wood, dude, I so quickly change lanes because that movie Final Destination, I swear to you, has scarred me for life to where I think at any moment that pipe will go straight through me. And I do not hesitate to change lanes. Even if that other lane is super compact and busy and it's not moving, I will turn there anyway. Okay? Just just for that peace of mind factor. Because no amount of money or anything can buy you peace of mind. To a certain extent, I think. John says, I think that too. Oh, yeah. yeah. 
it's pretty spooky. <laughs> Let me ask you this, J just just for fun. What's one of your biggest fears? I just told you mine. It's that one and flying cockroaches. Okay, those are my all my wow. Okay, also drowning. That one that one's a big one as well. Not like huge. I don't mind swimming and being in the water. It's, it's okay, but I just prefer to have my feet touch the bottom of the floor. Okay, I I, I prefer that because drowning is an issue. But let's let's ask you this, huh? What do you think is your scariest fear? Chris says spiders. Yeah, arachnophobia is a very real thing. Okay, it's it's spooky stuff. Rome says, I'm not even kidding. I don't suffer phobia, but I'm seriously considering it. Yes, I I can get that one. <laughs> okay, Tyler, being from Australia, I can get that. Sharks coming from the dark below. Yeah, that one's pretty spooky for anyone. Especially after watching Jaws, right? Mm. Ooh, John says, mine was my parachute not opening. Hmm. Jay Marty says, mine is falling off a building. Okay. Yeah, these are spooky. Oscar says, very high heights. Yeah. Yeah, these are scary. Spectre, we're on the same wavelength. That's what you have to do when you see Sitter being behind them. Just go. Bam, bam, bam. <laughs> Stargazer bringing in the jokes, but also real fears. And I'm scared of face huggers. I feel like anyone should be. I think it would only be appropriate if you were scared of face huggers. <laughs> John inside says, being buried alive. You know who also has that fear? Father Jack from uh, the TV show Father Ted. Oh, okay. Quick thing. Because this is like, this is going to be one of our last episodes of the year. I think we'll have one more next week. But if you have free time, and don't worry, I'll be doing three shows a week, by the way, forever, maybe. But if you have free time, watch Father Ted on YouTube. It's an Irish sitcom from the 90s, and it is the funniest TV show of all time. It's one of my all-time favorites right next to SpongeBob, all right? And if you feel like laughing, yeah, that is the show to watch. You can find all of them for free on YouTube. All right, getting into our next one here. This one's getting like really cool, actually. And it's an interesting hypothesis that was recorded by the Astrophysical Journal. And it says here, according to new research theorized by astrophysicist Earl Bellinger and colleagues, a small number of primordial black holes formed in the first second after the Big Bang, have been captured by stars and could still reside in their cores. Okay, let's just dissect that for a second. What does that mean? They are saying, they're theorizing here, that there are some stars that have a black hole in the middle of the star. Does that even make sense? No. Why is that? Because when a star is dying and it eats itself up, right, it turns into a black hole. So how is this working? How, how is this mentality getting so far to the point to where they wrote a paper about it? Let's get into it. Because these black holes formed from hot, dense clumps of matter could provide insights into the early universe and black hole formation. However, detecting them is challenging due to their high speeds and their rarity of such captures. The study suggests two possible outcomes for stars that capture these black holes. First, if the black hole is very small, it might not significantly affect the star. Second, if the black hole is large enough, it could grow by consuming the star, leading to black hole cannibalism. And this process could cause the star to expand and emit extra energy, resembling a red giant, but without the typical temperature increase. Such stars, known as red stragglers, might be hawking stars, powered by black small black holes at their cores, a concept first suggested by Stephen Hawking. The more you know. I feel like I learned something new about Stephen Hawking all the time. That, that's a new one for me. But the presence of a black hole could explain the universal evolutionary path of red stragglers, which are difficult to chart compared to other stars. By studying the pulsations and vibrations of these stars, astronomers might detect ongoing feasting 
by the black holes within them. This is a wacky, wacky theory, okay? But I'm not saying that I can't dig it. I am not saying that it could not be true. First of all, I have no degree in astrophysics, okay? You could tell me anything and I'll say, yeah, maybe, probably, I don't know. You know more than I do. And you can crunch numbers a million times better than me, right? But, but in all seriousness here, science and discoveries and uh, people that are doing explorations of any sort, right? They're going to come across theories attempting to explain things that they do not understand, at least at this point in time. So when we put all of these ideas on the table, then it is easier to actually find those answers instead of saying, it's definitely A because I say so and no one can disagree with me. And if you do, you're going to prison, right? That that That's old school. A few hundred years ago, up to like, I don't know, maybe 50 years ago. Now we're in a more modern time, at least I like to think this at the very least, that we're able to have these more open conversations and not agree with one another, but not necessarily scrutinize them or criticize them to the extent of you're obviously stupid for having this theory. First of all, to have a theory, you got to do a lot of mental work physical work and for it to even be published by astrophysical journal i'm going to assume here it had to be peer-reviewed as well again i'm assuming i'm not too sure on that particular aspect of it having being peer-reviewed but at the very least it had to be revised by him and his colleagues referring to earl bellinger to say yeah this is some pretty good stuff let's publish it I don't know. I feel like that's that's pretty prevalent. Tyler says, your imagination and wonder is more important. That's how you get out of the box and make breakthroughs. Heck yes. That is... I couldn't agree more with you on that one. What do you think about this? Do you think this is actually possible? Or in your opinion, would you classify it as a wacky and maybe irrational theory? Let me know in the comments. Let me know in the live chat. I do try my absolute best to read all of the comments because your insights are not only valuable to me, but to everyone else that reads them as well. So share your thoughts, your insights, your opinions right down below or right here if you're watching this live. Also, before we continue, in their research, the scientists turned to the theory that the universe is full of tiny pr primary black holes, and they could probably explain dark matter, which makes up about 85% of matter in the universe. That's a, that's a really exciting theory. Even just an idea of what if, okay, bear with me here, what if all that Dark matter is just baby black holes. Could you imagine? Okay, you're just casually walking through space, through Earth. It doesn't even matter, right? And there's dark matter everywhere. I know this isn't, isn't actually how it works, but just bear with me, okay? And you're just casually walking, and then you, you, go, you open the cupboard and you grab a snack, but then your hand gets swallowed by a black hole. How are you going to explain that to your mom, okay? To your teacher, to, to your dog? How are you going to explain that to them? That's, that's a crazy theory when you put it in that context. Now, is that actually how you should think about it? Probably not, because that's too insane. But that's where my mind went. And this show, we share thoughts, even the crazy ones together. <laughs> it's, just, it's just a funny theory to me. Just open the cupboard and it's gone. But maybe that's where all of our socks go and hair ties. They just fall into a black hole never to be seen again. You put them in the dryer and they just disappear. The amount of hair ties and socks that I've lost is dumb. Nowhere to be seen. Not a single place. Okay, this one. This one is, is also hilarious. Let me share my screen here. So we're looking at some geese, all right? But these aren't your normal geese that are living their best lives in a lake or in a pond, eating algae and tiny little fishies. No, in this case, 
let me just let me just read this to you. It's 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 awesome. So a prison in Brazil has innovatively replaced its guard dogs with a flock of geese as security measures. So these geese were they have pretty acute hearing and ability to make loud noises when they detect unusual sounds, such as attempted escapes, effectively alerting human guards. And this method not only serves as an effective backup for the prison's electronic and in-person surveillance, but it also is more cost-effective than maintaining guard dogs. When I read this, I was laughing so hard that I peed myself. But then, after I finished wiping away the tears off my face, I thought to myself, have you ever been chased by a goose, by a chicken? It's scary stuff, okay? They are loud, they're fast, and they will peck you so hard through your skin that you start bleeding, all right? That is some spooky stuff. Now, dogs, guard dogs, they also go ham on you. They chase you and they bite you all up and you're bleeding everywhere. And that's also very terrifying. But ducks, okay, prisoners wouldn't see it coming. They're like, hey, little guy. And then bam, 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 you're getting chased and you are screaming your head off. So you didn't see it coming. It's, it's that element of surprise, if and only if you've never been chased by a duck or a chicken before. Now, if you have been in that predicament, at some point in your life, you might be just a tad bit scared, but you probably have almost the same elevated fear levels as you did the first time. Because these guys, they're scary when they're angry. As most animals are, to be fair, and people included. But um, you don't see it coming until you, until you do. Okay? So these geese guards, the GG patrol... <laughs> They patrol the space between the prisoner's inner fence and its main outer walls, contributing to the overall quiet and secure environment, especially at night. And this practice isn't entirely new. Brazilian prisons have been utilizing geese for security purposes for at least 12 years, gaining international attention in 2011 for its use of geese, referring to the Sobral prison in Sao Paulo. Similarly, Chinese border patrols have also employed geese for their superior noise detection capabilities, using them to deter illegal immigrants for at least two years. This unconventional yet effective security measure highlights the innovative approach being taken to enhance safety and surveillance in various settings. This is news to me. I had no idea that Brazil had been doing this for 12 years. China's been doing it for two. I didn't even know that geese had amazing hearing. Okay. I, I am blown away by that. We hear dog hearing. That's like the best hearing on the planet, right? So they say at the very least. But for geese to be a cheaper option and to be almost just as good, I'm impressed. There is a video attached to this article, and those links will be in the description box below. But in that video, they actually speak to the Brazilian patrol officers, getting their insights and their opinions on the geese. And they say that it's very effective. But not only that, what's really cool about that video is that they demonstrate where the geese reside, and they built a little, a little pond for them. I think that's adorable. I really do. <laughs> Geese goons, says John. That's a funny one. Mari says, come on. Ain't afraid of no chicken. Maybe you have a phobia. Not me. I don't know who you're referring to, but it ain't me. <laughs> Brian says, I think some Canadians have used guard beavers dressed in denim. Bring in the jokes. I like that. But if you're serious, uh, I need I need a link for that one. Because using beavers, dude, those things are also vicious. It's like the same thing with koalas, okay? In, 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 uh, in Australia. They're super cute and cuddly and everyone loves them. But man, you never want to meet one in the wild. They are brutal little creatures. 
And I just learned like this wild fact about them. And I'm going to share it. It's it's um it's PG-13. OK, so if you have kids, put them aside. But I'm going to share this because I play this really awesome game on my phone that like throws all this trivia at you. You got to guess the right answer. It keeps me on my toes. It keeps my brain young. And I never want to be stopped by someone and say and have them ask me a question and like not, not know the answer and look stupid. Right. So this little this little fact about koalas that most people don't know including myself um i'm gonna whisper this one but so female koalas they have two holes that lead to the um, uterus area so male koalas have a have a little pee pee that forks so it can get to both holes um yeah and so that little fact right there made koalas a million times less cute by far that is so alien i have never heard of another mammal or what are they called they're not they're not mammals they're um yeah maybe they are mammals i can't remember someone's gonna correct me on that once i once i learned that fact i was like never again i'm never gonna think how cute koalas are all right now you know okay uh you can look it up on your own time i will not share that with you but this is strange news that's a strange little fact for you Thought I might share it. And no marsupials. That was the word. Thank you, Moon at Noon. It was going to bother me. If they're not mammals, they are marsupials. Thank you for that. And Annie, y'all are on top of it. Sean, Sandy, Rome. Killing it. Yeah. Well, if it's if it's your late mom's favorite, yeah. Um, she, she, we're we're going to keep it her favorite without that little piece of information. <laughs> Yeah, chili. Yeah, koalas ain't they ain't that cute. <laughs> but um, that is it for the show today. If you haven't watched the 2023 UFO news recap, I genuinely highly recommend that you do. It was yesterday's show because it lets you know of all the crazy things that happened this year, referring to UFOs. I also did a YouTube short on it, like right before this show started. 60 seconds but it's at double speed and i will make it well i don't want to give away that information just yet at least so keep an eye out for that because it's already up on youtube i do three shows a week right here on this channel so subscribe if you haven't already and also hit that notification bell so that you are up to date and you know first when the shows go live follow me on twitter at eyes underscore on the skies for all of my updates and news and also on instagram at strange paradigms where i share pictures and short videos as well if you want to continue the conversation bring it over to the discord server with 2700 other like-minded members it's like a 3000 okay i don't want to keep saying 2700 okay that effort of saying all those extra numbers is unnecessary so let's get to 3k on discord if you want to continue the conversation talking about your insights your opinions your experiences and more okay by 2024 i want to say 3k all right do that do that for me please. And thank you. I want to say thank you to everyone watching this live, all the super chats, super stickers, YouTube members, and Patreon supporters. You simply know I cannot do this show without you. That is it for today. I will see you next time. Be safe. And remember, keep your eyes on the skies.